Hi, welcome to the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk. This is episode 155. I'm Cam and this is Julie. We are moving on into the next section and it's Shoftim, uh, which means judges. judges. And it is in Deuteronomy 16, 18, going to 21, 9. And if you would like to view last year's, it is 109 A and B, and the year before that was 60 A and B. So you have the prophets also with it on B last year, and the um, Brit Hadashah on the 60. Yes, and um, if we can figure out the number earlier, I think it's seven. And she'll put it right there. I'll put it right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's look at, uh, let's start at verse one. Seems to be no way. I want to start lately. <laughs> no way. <laughs> what? All right, 16, 18. Appoint judges and officers within all your gates, which the Lord your God is giving you according to your tribes, and they shall judge the people with righteous right rulings. Okay, so I want to start there because that really is the whole feel of this week. What? I don't know, just the righteous right rulings instead of just right rulings. Because yes. you can have right rulings, but they're not quite the Lord, so they're not righteous yeah. right rulings. So go back to what we talked about last week about through his eyes. Yeah. Is that what you were going to talk about? Uh, yeah. Kind of? No, yeah. It's, it, yeah. She brought that up. But then we're going to go somewhere else with that. Okay. So through his eyes, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. the right rulings, so that's going to be a righteous right ruling. So here's where I was going to go. Because we have these judges... And officers, right? These are two two groups of people. But if you look in 17, in 17 verse 9, And shall come to the priests, the Levites, and to the judges who is in those days that uh, and shall acquire. Okay, my point is, now we're listing three. So uh -huh. we have your judges and your officers in chapter 16, they're going to be in all your city gates. Uh -huh. And then, when matters too hard, then you bring it to a priest, Levite, and a judge. It's not a bar joke. These are the three, okay? Which, if you think about it, this is a very <laughs> common grouping. That, you know, if you have three, this is a very common grouping. Just the natural like, Israelite walks right. up to a priest, a judge. <laughs> Which is right, because they did this. You know, in the, the Samar Levite. Good Samaritan, yes. right? It was who? The it priest. was the priest. The Levite, the Levite and, and the Israelite. And, and, That's yeah, who it should it, be. Right. And but Samaritan. Messiah changed it with Samaritans. So they're like, oh, okay. So right. that was the three groups that were commonly spoken of. Right here we see that of all three groups, they are meant to be involved in making judgment. Mm -hmm. now, verse 18 says, and this is Jethro speaking to uh, Moses. It says, both you and these people with you shall certainly wear yourselves out. For the matter is too heavy for you. You are, excuse me, um, you are not able to do it yourself. Now listen to my voice. Let me counsel you and Elohim be with you. Stand before Elohim for the people and you shall bring the matter to Elohim. And you shall enlighten them concerning the laws of the Torah and show them the way in which they should walk and work which they are to do. But you yourself seek out from all the people able men who fear the Lord, men of truth, hating on fair gain, and place them over them, or place these over them, to rule of thousands, ruler of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they shall rightly rule the people at all times. And it shall be that they bring every great matter to you, but they themselves right, ru rightly rule every small matter, so make it lighter, lighter for yourself, so they shall hear, uh, excuse me, bear with you. All right, so right there we see the very beginning of the idea of, okay, Moses, you're not going to do this all by yourself. You're going to seek the Lord on the hard things, but you're going to share this responsibility with others. But the goal there is to teach them the law mm -hmm. and then show them how to walk yeah. and then what they should do. Which takes me immediately to chapter 19 this week where we have, I'm going to give you a prophet just like Moses. That's what Yeshua is going to do. I was do. just about to say, this sounds exactly like Yeshua. Yes. Hello. Hello. Right. But, yes. Now look at this. Like we see in 16, 18, and 17, um, 9, or whatever it was, 17, 8, where we have these groups. You, you realize the whole body, all of Israel had to be trained in this. Because for the nations, all of Israel will be those judges. 
Right. It makes me think of Romans 2, um, the end of Romans 1, and then all of Romans 2. And, you know, we often use Romans 2 to be like, oh, don't judge. See, it says don't judge. But in all reality, what he's talking about there is, yes, you are to judge according to the word. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't judge properly, then they're within your midst. Isn't that what we talked about this week? Yes. Get them out of your midst. Romans, Paul's talking about, look, if they stay in your midst, it's going to pollute you. Actually, what Paul's saying is you're allowing them to stay in your midst because you too are polluted. Right. And so we see these instructions actually from chapter 12 to chapter 26, the instructions of here is the law. Here's mm -hmm. what this looks like. Here's how you are to do this so that you can, what, stay in the land. Yeah, be right. the example you're supposed to be and, and walk out and be prepared to recognize Messiah because he's going to come like Moses. Yes. And if they're not walking in the way, thinking that they're walking according to Moses, but they're not, well, we see what happened. Right. And we'll but have it, a repeat. It really just proves that, A, they weren't walking in the way when right. Messiah came, came, but B, because he had such a big following, there were people whose hearts were ready. Absolutely, yes. Which yeah. would make me... At, and I know John the Baptist was the one who kind of got them ready because uh -huh. he was really like, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right. Repent. And it really, that, it took repentance first. Then they could see Messiah. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Just instead of just recognizing by he fulfills blah, 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 they had to get their hearts ready first. Then otherwise you can't see Okay. Him. So back to the eyesight. We mm -hmm. had to get the seeing it out of our way to see right. it his way. Right. And, right. And, I really suggest that the whole point of chapters 12 to 26 is the, look, these are the words and this is what it looks like. To be honest, you know, we talked about last week or the week before the word word showing up. Yes. Yes. Okay. So what's the word? The words, let's go back to Genesis, I mean, uh, Exodus 20. These are the 10 words that I spoke. It has to do with the 10 commandments. And then after that, if you think about chapters 21, 22, 23, 23 these are fleshing it out. Fleshing this out is the a 10. new well, not new, but this is the, the generation that's going to go into the land. It's basically just fleshing it out again, what it looks like. Because remember, the judges are supposed to teach them how to do it, what it looks like. Right. That's right, exactly right. what's happening right, right now. Right. And he's already setting up these judges. We see several times where Moses is like, I can't do it on my own. I mean, he comes to recognize this. Yeah. Even after Exodus 18, where he... Where Jethro is telling him you can't do it. Right. I mean, you know, he has several times he's like, oh, I can't bear these people, please. Mm -hmm. So he knew he has to have others working with him. Now let's think about the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. he, he's the head. It's not that Yeshua can't bear us. He can. He did. Right. But I'm sure there are times he's like, oh, would the rest of you do what I want you to do? You know, his arms flopping around. He's like, stop it. Stop it. You know? Right, right, right. We're the body. We're supposed to be like, yes, sir, stop. <laughs> right. You know, we've got to move as one. And that's what Moses is establishing and setting them up so that they can move as one. Right. Okay, this all kind of leads me to something I've been thinking of lately. Okay. We have always said that we right now are like the generation that's going to go into the land because mm -hmm. we're on the cusp of going to, into the kingdom. But the more I look at the patterns, the more I think, are we really or are we like the first generation? I'm starting to think we're more like the first generation because this next generation, when Yeshua is here mm -hmm. teaching, it will really be reiterated. But even within now, us getting an understanding that this is important, we're still too divided. We're still too splintered. Yeah. We're, we're like the first generation. We've come out. Right. We're like in the wilderness, but we're getting ready to go into the millennium, not the kingdom, which is eternity. And that one would be like the second generation where everything will function absolutely perfectly because we know from Revelation that even in the millennium, iron, you know, it's, got, it's an iron scepter and there's the chance at the end where everybody turns. Right. So, I mean, so many people so turn. So question. So is it maybe a double, here's what I mean, when we look at eternity as the end, mm -hmm. we're, we're not that generation. Right. But right. we're the generation that might go into, or at least teach our kids we can, well, no. on, to get into millennium, making millennium actually the wilderness. Yes. Well, yes. 
But to me, but it's it's kind of like this is a wilderness, and then that's a right, real right. That's what I mean. It's like a double. I mean, yes, it, it, can it is be like this a double. And, and the ones here, if we're part of that first then generation, here, okay, the first generation, and this is eternity. You know, if we're part of this one, then really what we're just like is Joshua and Caleb, who still get to do it here. Right. They get to do it here, and they get to do it here, and. They have to bear through this part. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, to get to that. Yeah. But Joshua and Caleb represent the northern and the, and southern. the southern. Absolutely. So you've got people from all of Israel who right. are going to be under Joshua and Caleb, kind of like the Ten Commandments and everything fleshed out. Yeah. We're going to yeah. be the fleshed out part of those two. Okay. Are you part of this or are you part of this? Both of them right. make yeah. it yeah. That's and, good. and get to go in. I started thinking and, about that when we did the spies. Uh -huh. All the way back then, I started thinking, wait a minute. The thing about the spies was he said, when you go in, here's your borders. Right. But we know that never happened. Even with the second generation, right. it didn't happen. Right. So it made me and think, wait a minute. Still has never happened. Wait a minute. So now here we are on the cusp, and mm -hmm. we could go into these all borders, but we know that's not going to happen until millennium. Right. Millennium is when it's all under right. complete. So so here's just another thing to think about. Remember, you have, while that generation all had to die, you had those that got to stay all the way to the end. Yeah. And what do they do? They taught the children rightly. Yes. They prepared yeah, that generation yeah. to go in. And they were still credited with worthy to be remembered. We know that from the daughters of Zelf, Delf, Zelfaha. Because right. even though he couldn't go in, he was still credited and worthy to have his name brought in. And when we go through in, um, what is it, uh, Numbers uh, 30, mm -hmm. 3, where we have the counting of everyone that goes in. Right. Or excuse me, it's 26. The counting of everyone that goes in, all those are the names of the forefathers who weren't actually going in. But their names were They're considered worthy to be counted. To be counted. Yeah. So, because again, they had something to do with molding that generation right. that did. So, my point is, is it doesn't in any way diminish our walk or what we're doing or the importance because it's kind of like the monkey. Is it the barrel monkeys or whatever it's called? Uh -huh. yes, if this yes. one's not holding on, then this one has nothing to hold on to. Right. So, I don't know. It's just yeah. something I've been thinking about lately. It's a good thought. I don't know. And I still think the pattern works the other way too with Yeshua's first coming. Oh, yeah. You know. Well, and that's the second. great thing is we can look at all the different patterns potential. Patterns. Pa yes. And j look, Messiah is our brother. Messiah is the groom. Messiah is, he's all these things. But just because he's one doesn't mean he can't also have a lesson in the other one. Right. So that's the same thing. They they work both ways. It doesn't decrease the value. That's the facets of scripture. Right. You can be right and I can be right. Right. And they both are important. Yeah. You know, and they're both uh, interpretations that the Lord presents, not that we're making up. Because again, it's through the righteous eyes and not through our eyes. Which, on that, I'm going to take us back to what we were talking <laughs> okay, about. Okay, sorry. And no, that's fine. This is good. And that had to do with, if you notice in uh, Exodus 18, where it was talking about that the men would be able to rule rightly. It says absolutely they will. And we see right here that they will. Mm -hmm. Moses' job was to go before the Lord on the difficult things. And we have here, like I said, we have the priest, the Levite, and the judge. And those are the ones who are in Jerusalem who are going to work together. And the reason why I love this is because, it, again, I reiterate, it shows that every one of us are responsible for learning this. Because anyone could be picked as a judge as long as they were worthy. Yeah. We have all kinds of examples just from this understanding through the Brit Hadashah, through the letters of epistles, how to pick your elders. Mm -hmm. um, what, how, what kind of family people they need to be, you know? So we have these examples to what, to make them people who are accountable, that people are willing to listen to what they say. Because one thing we see this week and we see Yeshua emphasizing it is it doesn't matter. Once a right ruling is given, that's what you're going to go by. You don't get to say, oh, well, appeals court. Yeah. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't even matter if it's, well. It doesn't matter if it's right. The Lord's going to look at, are you going to go buy it? Are you going to follow that? The Lord will rectify it. I know. Yeah, I noticed but that. But you still have to go buy it. You still have to follow their ruling. Messiah says that in Matthew 23, 3. He's like, look, 
do what they say to do. When they sit on the seat of Moses, right. do what they say. That didn't mean, well, I I don't agree with that. So I, I don't think the scripture says that. It doesn't matter. We, we don't have that choice. There has to be a sense of order. There has to be the head, the, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're told to do something that's completely against scripture, like have a false God or something like that, okay, now you know. Now you, you choose the Lord first. Right. But when it's just matter of opinions, mm -hmm. we don't have an option. You have to go by it. And our going by it, whether we think it's right or not, is showing our faithfulness, not to the person who told us, but to the Lord and his word. Right. That's hard pill to swallow. It is. Yeah. We see so much of the judgment this week. With that, we also see the judgment part with um, if someone's found dead in your area, the judges determine... You know, they go out and determine who is, or the elders go out and determine who's responsible for making sure that the innocent blood is, is covered. And then mm -hmm. they go and get the priests and the Levites. Right. Because we're going to have the priest is what? Between God and Israel, not man. God okay. and Israel. Levites, God and man. Why? Because they're the ones that take account for us. Mm -hmm. The judges between man and man. Gotcha. So all facets are judged are to make sure that they are rightly covered. There's not just, oh, it's between you and God. No, it's all facets. Again, for what? The protection of the body, protection of Israel. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I keep going, but that's it. All right. Well, we thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you have a fantastic week. Shalom.